Hi everybody, it's Vicki. Um, I'm going to do a haul video for you today on women's vintage clothing. I did one back in December, it was more of an unboxing, and I got such a positive response to that video, and so many people have asked me to do more, that here I am. I actually have a large uh, bunch of women's clothing that I'm gonna go through here, and really what I'm gonna show you is a little bit about style and try and describe to you the decade that things are from, what the keywords are, I'll show you some tags and some uh, uh, key things to look for when you're looking for vintage clothing. It is probably the most difficult genre to learn and um, understand because it's not something that's easy to research. It's more of a hands-on thing. So hopefully this will help some of you and maybe help you when you're out shopping yourself. Okay, so uh, the first thing I'm going to show you is just this blouse that I picked up. Um, this is a woman's blouse that I would call a secretary blouse. It's got the high neck ruffle collar and it has this bow. These were really popular in the early 80s, these bows on blouses. Some of them are string bows, some are ribbon bows. This one looks like it's just like this ruffled thing that looks like a really bad um, tie. But this type of blouse uh, is still very popular. Now this is this tag, it's, it's a no name brand. It's you know uh, called Lucky Winner. Um, nothing I've ever heard of before. I paid $5 for this blouse. I'll probably sell it for about $40, but this is what you would call this like a high neck ruffle secretary blouse. This type of bow, when it is more of the bow that you can tie into a bow itself is actually called a pussy bow. Um, that's just the terminology for it. This is a little bit shorter than that, so it may or may not work, but I'll, I would probably use that as a keyword anyway. So again, these were really popular in the early 80s, uh, even as early as the late 70s. So some people will ask me, how do you know when you look up a brand, uh, when you're looking at vintage, should you look up the brand at all? Should you go buy comps on a brand? And here's what I try to tell people. Um, brand name is very, very uh, unimportant for the most part when you're talking about vintage. Um, if you find anything in this brand, you may or may not find comps. This is not a brand that is probably still around. It's not really relevant. It's more about describing the style of, and the decade of what you have in front of you than the brand name. The brand name is gonna be in part important when it's like Chanel or Hermes or Yves Saint Laurent, something like that. Something high-end designer is gonna be important when you're doing vintage, but for the most part, little known or not very well-known brands are not what is gonna be important. So the brand is something I probably won't even put in the title. I'll put it in the description, but not in the title. And when you're comping things like this, you wanna comp by style, by decade, by those keywords I'm talking about, like secretary blouse or ruffle blouse. These are pretty easy staples that most people can pick up for $5 and under, and they always sell, and they sell pretty quickly, and they're super lightweight, obviously, so everything just goes first class. Um, this is another type of dress that I picked up. Again, the same era. This is like a 70s, uh, late 70s, probably early 80s dress. I would call this a secretary dress. I would call it a day dress. Um, what you see here is this type of fine pleating. This is called an accordion pleat. So this would be like a high neck ruffle secretary dress accordion pleat in like a burgundy or a wine color. Uh, the brand name, I don't even think it has any tags with the brand. I paid $8 for it. Um, I don't think the brand name is important. I didn't even look at it. But this type of dress is something that I would probably sell for like the $50, in the $50 range. Again, high neck, ruffle, accordion pleat, secretary dress. I would put in the title vintage 70s or vintage 80s. Um, yeah, and this is the type of stuff that sells well on Etsy, but it does also do pretty well on eBay. Um, I put my items on both platforms. I actually put them on Posh and Macari as well. I don't have as much success with my vintage items on those two platforms, but because I use lists perfectly, it's just easy enough for me to put it on all of the platforms anyway. And if I get a sale on one of the others, then, then great. Um, this is another item that is not super well made. It was probably really cheap, uh, very inexpensive. So this is vintage 70s. And it's got this little lace-up grommet detail and the fringe. It's a denim. It could be either considered a super mini dress 
wore more of like a tunic top. Um, here's, it's probably dead stock. It feels like dead stock. And the reason why I say that is, so here's the brand on it, uh, Corinda, California. Uh, again, I haven't looked it up. I don't know that it's anything special. It feels like very inexpensive. So the other thing that I wanted to show you on this, and the most important thing is that a lot of times you're gonna see these tags on vintage clothing. This is a cardboard tag. These were meant to be pulled off. So the chances are that this is dead stock is pretty high. It's also being called a size eight. Now vintage size eight is equivalent to like a small or an extra small now. What you wanna do when you're listing vintage clothing is list in the current size. So you would check standard measurement charts and you would, I would list this as a vintage small. And then I would put in the description, tagged as a vintage size eight, measures as a current size small. Uh, I put that in the title and the description. Nobody is searching by a vintage size eight because they think it's gonna fit them now and it's a size small, do you know what I mean? So um, vintage clothing was sized much smaller. People were much smaller than they were, than they are now. Um, but this style is something that would be 60s, 70s. I'd put hippie, boho, fringe, all that kind of stuff in the title. And I'd probably price this around $50 as well. It's not extremely well made, but it's a good example of that type of decades clothing style. Uh, this is one that's not super popular or, or, or super exciting, but I picked it up because of the tags. So this is, uh, I paid $3. This is a dead stock item. This is 80s. So it's an 80s Wrangler shirt. I just thought the tag was super cool. And back in the 80s, it was sold for $4.99. It originally was $15. It has the dead stock tag on it. It's juniors. It's nothing special, just a three-quarter uh, roll tab cuff on a, on, a, on a shirt, a junior shirt. But it was so cheap and cute. I like the tag, so I grabbed it. This is probably just like a $30 shirt. Um, but 80s, one of the things to look for for 80s, this I would put the title of the brand in as far as it being Wrangler because that's a popular brand and people may search for Wrangler. Um, but 80s tags you're gonna find are, the, the font on them is a little bit bigger, it's brighter in a lot of cases. It's like the clothing itself, it was bigger and brighter and bold. And what you're looking at here is, I think it should say made in the USA somewhere on here. I didn't look, but yeah, it doesn't say, oh yep, right there, made in the USA. Now, W70 might have been the year, but I doubt it. I'm thinking this is 80s. Looks, looks 80, smells 80, so that's all 80s to me. So, um, there's that. This is another dress that I picked up. This is just, again, a very basic. Nothing that I'm going to show you here is any, like, home runs that are going to be hundreds of dollars. Most of these are what I consider my bread and butter brands. A lot of people... Uh, talk about like Abercrombie or White House Black Market or Chico's or whatever as being their current bread and butter brand, bed, bread and butter brands, but mine is uh, vintage. So this right here is a 70s dress. You can see it's really gaudy polyester and it's brown with these bright, this bright paisley pattern on it. So the reason why you can tell this is 70s is a couple of reasons. Generally by the fabric, this type of polyester was super popular in the 60s and the 70s, but more so with this is because of the big, wide, long spread collar. That's what you'd call this, a spread collar. It's kind of like a disco thing from the 70s, but this is more of a mod style. Now mod style is more 60s, and the, you think go-go and go-go boots and short dresses uh, for the 60s, but this is more of a 70s. This was made in the 70s with the collar and everything, but the pattern is kind of mod. It's a weird combination. I paid $4 for this, and then this tag, this will probably a company that you can figure out somewhere, but again, it's not a brand that's gonna be important. I wouldn't put it in the title. I would use up that title to put in all the information I can about the item itself, uh, all the keywords that I can find. So acetate and nylon, yeah, it's like that polyester blend. And I would put in, you know, spread collar, it's got flower power, paisley, it's just a belted dress, just a casual dress. This would probably list for about $60. This is one of the older pieces that I found. This is just a very basic, plain uh, dress with not quite full length sleeves, they come up a little bit higher on the cuff and that was because women used to wear gloves with their dresses and it would come up higher so you could see the gloves. 
So it's more than a three quarter sleeve, but it comes right past the elbow. It's not quite a full length sleeve if you look at this based on my arm. Uh, so this has a metal zipper. That's usually a pretty good giveaway uh, as far as how, what the age of a, uh, an item is. Metal zippers are rarely used now. They're all plastic and inexpensive. Um, the other giveaway is gonna be the tag. This particular one happens to have the tag. This Herbert Schneider was a bit of a fair, uh, a high-end brand at the time. So this one I might put the title, the name in the title, but it has the information here. Uh, see, this was considered a size 12 back then. Okay, this is nowhere near a size 12. Uh, but this is uh, a wool dress. This particular wool dress has a couple of um, moth holes in it but it's really pretty in the basic style. This would be considered like a basic day dress. And I would probably list this in the neighborhood of like 60 or $70 because the moth holes are very small and they're not very visible. It does have pockets. It's just a nice representation of a vintage type of um, everyday dress that a woman would wear. This one I believe is 50s. I think this is from the 50s. I'll do a little bit more research on the tag. But all of these things, by the way, I haven't looked up anything before I'm talking to you. Um, but based on the style and the way that it's form-fitting, and it has almost a pencil skirt instead of a full skirt. Pencil skirt is when it's fitted and, and long. And then it usually will have what's called a kick pleat in the back. That's what this is. Instead of a slit, that's a pleat. It's called a kick pleat to make it easier to walk. Women would wear this dress and it would be tight down their thighs and then they would need room to walk. If you're wearing a long dress that's tight all the way down, your legs have to be able to move so you can like lengthen your stride. So again, this would have probably list around $60, $70 or so. Uh, I paid $4. Now, I'm, I'm not sure that you're gonna absorb all of this information, of course, for every time you walk into a store, but if there are a couple things, key things that you can pick up based on some of the keywords that I'm using or some of the styles, um, hopefully that will help. I mean, vintage, like I said, is one of the most difficult things to learn and teach for me. I just learned it over the past 15 to 20 years I've been selling on eBay. I used to, there used to be message boards on eBay that I used to follow religiously about vintage clothing and um, it just really speaks to me. So because I found it interesting, I absorbed more and learned more about it. Uh, let's see. So this is another, basic dress. Made in the USA. Again, they're calling this a size, uh, again, Jennifer G or Jennifer G, um, not a brand that I'm familiar with and probably not relevant, but made in the USA. Calling it again a size 10, it's probably a small based on measurements. I paid $6. This is just a pretty uh, lavender dress. Again, remember those tiny pleats at the bottom. It's called, they're called uh, accordion pleats. It comes with its own belt, which is nice. Uh, and it's just a basic polyester type of dress. This would be, again, late 70s, early 80s. It's just a normal crew neck with a couple of buttons out the back. This is the type of uh, sleeve that they call a bracelet sleeve. When you're looking at item specifics and you can't, you know, these, these dreaded item specifics on eBay that seem to be never ending, so one of the options for sleeve type is called bracelet sleeve. Most people don't really know what that is. That usually means it's a cuff, that's a, that's a tight sleeve that kind of poofs out like this. So it's just a little tip. I don't generally check that off. I think that type of um, item specific narrows your search field down too much. I don't think anyone's searching for a bracelet sleeve dress. You know, it's just one of those weird things. I just put long sleeve. Um, I did show this in our haul video, but just in case you didn't watch that or you're watching this at different time, this was one of my favorite pickups from the weekend. This is a vintage 60s, 1960s. It's kind of an all over paisley print. It's a quilted satin fabric. This is real popular in robes and sleepwear at the time. But if you look at these are huge wide legs, right? This is a jumpsuit. This is considered leisure wear. So a woman would be entertaining at home and she would have company and they'd be having cocktails and this is what she'd wear. It was about the time when you'd be wearing like a house coat or a house dress, uh, which were caftans and things like that. So the same era. So this would be like late 60s. And this is actually one you could look up by the tag probably. So this is Penny. It's like JC Penny. JC Penny's loungewear. It's hand washable, although it's machine washable because I washed it. 
and uh, yeah, it's super cute. I like this. I paid $25 for this, but I will probably not accept less than $150. This is one of my favorite pieces that I just picked up. Let's see. A few more. Hope I'm not boring you. <clears throat> this is one that I picked up. It was actually a 50% off tag color. So I paid $3 for this. This is, everything about this is 80s. 80s, 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 okay? So from the crossover top, which is kind of, it's called a surplice, surplus, C-S-U-R-P-L-I-C-E, surplus top, padded shoulders, you've got the gathered elastic waist, pockets, and just the, um, the tapered leg. So it's bigger at the thigh, and then it tapers down to a tighter ankle. And this is just pure 80s. So it would be an 80s royal purple jumpsuit. And the tag is Joan Walters. Again, made in the USA. Again, this is a size 12. It's probably more of a medium nowadays. You can see they've got that, it's got that big baggy butt because of the high waist mom, mom style. Again, this is something I would probably list this for $40, $50 maybe. It's not a super well-made one. It's very lightweight, it's kind of a crinkly rayon which was also really popular in the 80s and 90s. Uh, let's see. So this is another dress that I picked up about four or five dollars I think I paid for this. This is very, very typical of the 60s and 70s style. It has a rear zip all the way up the back. And then it has, remember what I call this bow? It's called the pussy bow in the front. And it's made out of polyester with the bracelet sleeve, bracelet cuff. And then it kind of has this argyle plaid bottom. It's in a pink, it's a pale pink with the off-white or cream color and it's kind of flecked with like orange and brown. It's just a weird pattern. But this would be what would be considered mod. So this would be like a 70s, 60s or 70s dress, late 60s early 70s. I probably paid about five or six dollars for this and it would be something that I would list for about sixty, seventy dollars. If you are interested in selling vintage clothing and you are not on Etsy, you are missing out. Etsy is going to command higher prices for your vintage clothing and it's a more discerning buyer than an eBay buyer. Uh, they know what they're looking for, they appreciate vintage clothing, they'll pay more for it. You will get more international orders than you will on eBay and uh, they're willing to pay the higher prices because they value the prices. Again, I talk about this a lot on our show, I know Katie and I both do. Looking up items based on comps when you're looking at vintage is going to do yourself a disservice because you're gonna be selling things for $20, $20 and under. Uh, value what you have if you have a good description if you have good photos if you have an item that you think is nice or you think is going to speak to a certain audience then price it accordingly um, most of these things if I were to comp based on the style or comp based on the brand name I would find little to no comps first of all and the ones that I would find would be somewhere in the neighborhood of twenty dollars I'm not selling anything for twenty dollars so know the value of what you have and believe in the value of what you have um, again, I picked up a lot of dresses with these accordion pleats, as you can see today. But this is, this reminds me of something my mom wore when I was a little girl. So uh, I can tell you right now, just by that memory, that this is a late 70s, early 80s type of dress. Now this has this teeny tiny string bow at the neck. I would not call that a pussy bow. I would call this a keyhole opening right here when it, you've got a close, but then it's got kind of like a boob window right there for the cleavage. That's called a keyhole opening. So this would be a high neck, ruffled dress, keyhole neck, accordion pleats, and it's just this polyester. It has a little bit of an elastic uh, at the wrist for the, the sleeves. But um, again, I think I probably paid around four or $5 for this dress. No brand name on it, it's not really necessary. If you display it properly on a mannequin or on a flat lay, you can make this look attractive. And um, it's just a basic dress. This would probably be in the $40 to $50 range. Okay, 
add just a few more pieces left. So this is one that I picked up. It's called a Damon dress. This has what's called a Union Care label. That also leads you to believe that A, it's vintage, and B, it's been made in the USA, which was real popular that they put these labels on in the 60s, 70s, and 80s of, on clothing. This one right here is 70s all day long. Okay, so what you're seeing on this is it's polyester. This is called, this texture right here on this dress is called a PK knit, P-I-Q-U-E, PK knit. If you can see that, you see it a lot on, um, men's polo shirts these days more than anything else you don't see it on a lot on dresses but this is a pk knit it's a full zip dress and it has this fold over collar which is wide and spread and pointy so like i told you before on the other item this is a 70s style this wide spread collar that's very 70s and it has a little matching belt that comes with it but this is real cute. This one was not very expensive. I think I probably paid around 4 or $5 for this as well. And uh, I don't think the brand name is anything special. It's just a sports dress type of thing. They would call this then, based on the fabric, I think it's supposed to be like sweat wicking or something. Uh, but I would probably list this in the $50 range. Now this, you can see, this is all 80s, right? I think most of you would be able to tell that this is a very 80s, super loud, super crazy print. This is just an unlined rayon uh, type of like blazer, woman's blazer. Wear it over a t-shirt. This type of pattern is still super popular for people that like to wear 80s clothing. If you see something loud and bright and it speaks to you, buy it because it's going to speak to somebody else. This is just a one button blazer. It's meant to be baggy and oversized and it has this huge loud print all over it, something about beach and tropical and water pool and who the heck knows. So the brand is Joe Harden. Again, not a brand that is super familiar, uh, probably irrelevant. Uh, it's 100% polyester. It feels like a rayon. It's very lightweight. It's unlined, made in the USA, definitely 80s. Uh, I would probably, what did I pay for this? I paid $3.99. I would probably list this at about $75, just based on the pattern. Take a really good bold photo of it, several photos, maybe roll the sleeves up a little bit because that's how it would be worn. And then uh, go, go make, have some fun with your listing. Put some fun keywords in, in your title. And um, yeah, this type of thing would de will definitely sell. Let's see, I've just got just a few more. Jumping ahead to another decade, this is a 90s. This is kind of the epitome of 90s dresses. Do most of you would probably remember this type of rayon, polyester, long dresses that were made in a floral print. A lot of times they had the tie that went in the back, usually sleeveless. There was a, a demand for that whole uh, romantic feminine look it was kind of to the the antithesis of the grunge look that was going on at the same time so you'd have the girls in the heroin chic grungy plaid cut off ripped outfits with doc martens and then you'd have the girls with the pretty bow in their hair and the little uh soft romantic floral dresses this is a brand that you want to look up this is a brand that is important it's not just a standard 90s it's called april cornell they actually still make some clothing, but this is a vintage one from the 90s. I'm trying to see if this is made in the USA then or not. I'm not sure. It doesn't say. Uh, but I paid $6 for this. This type of dress will sell for about 60 60 to sell. I'll probably price around 75 and then accept offers on it. But it's just a pretty floral pattern. Uh, I would consider this what's called a modest dress, even though it doesn't cover the arms. A lot of women would buy this and wear a sweater over it that are looking for modest clothing. It's long, it's not clingy, it's lightweight. Um, and again, April Cornell is popular. So even the current April Cornell clothing you should pick up when you find it. It's that same type of romantic colored fabrics. It reminds me of like Laura Ashley. Um, okay, so this is a good example of a homemade type of dress. So this is just a basic house dress, 
very 60s. It's just a yellow gingham check and it has pockets on the side and then it has this little, this is called rickrack, sewn onto it. So it's like that on the, on the, the trim all around. It's just a lightweight cotton fabric. It's probably just a house dress type of thing. Metal zipper. I paid $4 for this. Just, just uh, I will call this a house dress when I, when I list it. And I'll probably list it for $40 to $50. And just the two more. I paid $6 for this. I love vintage sleepwear and vintage robes. Um, they're very popular. People like the way things felt back then. They have a lot of nostalgia for them. And as far as being big and oversized and style, you know, a different style, it's not like the robes that you find now for, you know, cheap twenty dollars. You wash them twice and they're falling apart. This type of robe, I'd call this a robe or a house coat, because it's long. This is from the 60s or the 70s. Again, it's got this, this pattern of embroidered flowers up the front and this baby blue. Um, the fabric to me, I wouldn't want to wear. It's very scratchy. I don't like this type of fabric, but it's still very popular in the vintage clothing. It's Evelyn Pearson. It's a medium with a cardboard tag, which again means that it's probably dead stock because the second you, so it's Evelyn Pearson, the second you were to wash something like this, it would dissolve. So in most cases, it's it's probably dead stock. Um, it has it as a size medium. Again, if you do some measurements, this one might be a medium, it might be a small. Don't rely on the sizes you find on tags with vintage clothing. Definitely rely on sizing charts. And I paid $6 for this. I'll probably sell it for $65, $75 maybe. Uh, there are no pockets, it's not lined. The fabric is called Arnell triacetate and nylon. So back in the 50s, 60s, and even 70s, they had all these strange fabrics that were um, copywritten and created, but they were really almost all derivatives of polyester in some way, polyester and acetate and things like that. So while you probably won't find this fabric content on your drop dropdown, uh, just if it's, if it's labeled and you can see what it is, you just put it in your, in your listing. Um, and just do your measurements. Again, it's underarm to underarm, not pit to pit, please God. Uh, shoulder to shoulder and on something that's long you want to do a waist measurement and a hip measurement and the length because waist and hips if you're wearing something long and you're a woman a lot of people have a much have much bigger hips than a waist and they're sometimes they're different uh, measurements based on the, the style of the item and last but not least I chose this one because this one had no tags because of the style and this is something that would be considered, um, this is vintage, first of all, this is a vintage dress. Um, it would be considered 60s, mod. Mod, again, because of the type of, it's a short dress, it's fitted, it flares out. It has these big collar, this big collar, which is almost a 70s collar, but it's not spread. If it were spread, it would be more 70s. This is m definitely more of a 60s style. And when you have styles from two different decades, which happens often, especially in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, you have style that span both decades, it's because a lot of times you're gonna find a style at the end of, a, of one decade is going to transfer into the early parts of the other decade, so it could be 60s or 70s, uh, or it could be 70s and 80s. You know, disco went from late 70s to early 80s, so you'll find stuff that's disco style that totally looks 70s, but it may even have a tag on it and says it's like 82 or 83, it happens. Uh, those type of things are called cuspers. That means it fits a decade in a style. It fits more than one decade in, in, within the style. This has a tag. This is not homemade, actually, because it has a tag. It calls itself a size 7. Again, it's probably going to be very, very small. It feels, looks very small. But this type of lining and this half lining around the collar is very uh, popular for inexpensive clothing back in the 60s and the 70s. I would have actually said this was homemade if I hadn't found that tag because this is what you find a lot around around the collars. It's not a lined item, it's just lined where it's going to touch your skin and rub, which is kind of odd. This feels like a wool, some type of wool blend, and it has this lace trim. But this type of lining is it's acetate for sure. It feels like cheap polyester. 
Um, but this type of, I paid $10 for this dress because I really, really liked the style on it. I'll probably list this one for about 75. It's really cute. Uh, and again, I would call this mod, check, black and white, big collar, lace, all of those things you're gonna want to use as keywords. And this type of dress, I might even call, put a, a, a keyword in there of Lolita. That's something you might want to look up. Lolita is that, that style of little girl trying to look sexy. It's older girls. I'm not saying it's children that wear the clothing, but it's meant to look like that, that young ingenue. And it's more of a, a, a girly style that women wear to be sexy, if that makes sense. So that's pretty much it. That's what I chose to go through today. If you have any questions, feel free to post them under the video or shoot me a message or come find me in our Facebook group, the Boss Facebook group, which is, there is a link down below. If you are not a member of the group, you should be. And if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. And that's it. I'll do a few more of these if uh, there is a demand for them, but hopefully this helped a little bit and gave you, I don't know, a couple of keywords for some new items. That's it. See you guys soon. Bye.